welcome to another Just Came with your host, Just Came. Now, oh, I know you're all asking, Kane, why are you wearing that hat on your head? Well, the truth is my clippers have broken and I haven't been able to get a new one and my hair does look horrendous because I haven't been able to cut it. So I don't want you lot seeing it on camera. So I'm wearing a silly hat. So let's move on. So I bet you all thought that, oh, Just Came had gone forever. Well, the truth was I was just up for something to film during this terrible lockdown that we're all in. I mean, you know, stay safe, everyone. It isn't terrible. It needs to be done. Um, what have I been doing with my time? Well, I've been doing housework. I've been making plans. I've been reevaluating the channel. I've been looking at what I can do uh, because I'm a bit I've done the food bit now and I want to move on to something else now. I want to move forward into the world and review other things so the big plan in the future is to start reviewing airbnbs and what's to do in the local area and what the airbnb is like um and that sort of thing you know so really look forward to that we're going to be starting to get some special guests which are my friends from around the country they're we're hopefully going to get some of them involved with that we're still going to be going down to do the secret bunker in Nanswich. That is still on the card because I really do want to do that one. That's brilliant. With, of course, Big Mike. So, hi, Big Mike. I hope you can stay safe there and I hope you're well. So, today's video, I thought I needed to put something out there to say hi to you all. Hello. I'm still alive. I made it through COVD. Lovely. So, I thought... You don't know what I actually do for a living. Well, I work in an office and I have been working in offices for 20 years. And a lot of my roles have been customer service based. Now, over the years, through my 20 years of working in customer service, I have seen some shocking training videos. Training videos that are so far away from actual reality there's no useful information to be taken from it. One of the worst I've ever come across is this one. Let's wa let's watch. Good morning, sir. How can I help you today? You know what? I'm a little annoyed. I keep coming in here and you guys keep screwing up. Now I've had about enough and I'm taking my business somewhere else. Sir, I can tell that you're really frustrated and I'd sincerely like to help you. Can you tell me what the problem is? You know what the problem is? I bought this drill two weeks ago. I go home to use it, it doesn't work. I bring it back and you guys give me this. It doesn't work as well. Now I've spent a lot of time and money driving back and forth just to have you guys screw up over and over and I've had it. I want my money back. Okay, sir. So I just want to make sure that I understand. You purchased a drill from us and you took it home. You found out it didn't work. So you came back, got a replacement drill and that one didn't work as well. That's exactly right. You know what? I can understand your frustration. If I had purchased a drill and taken it home and twice it didn't work, I'd be really frustrated as well, especially when it was my valuable time that was at stake. Finally, someone gets it. Sir, I'm sorry you're unhappy with your purchase, and I'd like to work together to turn things around. Just like you, I would be really disappointed if this had happened to me. Is there something that I can do that would make this right? Can we come up with a solution? You know what? All I want, all I want is to have a drill that works. I just want to leave here today, go home, and have a product that works. Okay, so what if I were to go and get a drill from the back, we open up the package, allow for you to test it before you leave the store to make sure that it works, would that be okay? If you can bring a drill out here and prove to me that it's going to work when I leave, then fine, yes. Okay, if you bear with me one moment, I'll be right back, sir. Okay, here you go, sir. Here's one that you can open up and make sure that it works before you leave. Seems to be all right. 
Yeah, okay. This one seems to work. I want you to know that when I went back to grab this, yeah. I spoke to my manager. I want to thank you for taking the time and bringing this to our attention. Okay, well, I appreciate that. And you know what? I know I came in here a little hot-headed and frustrated, but I appreciate the fact that you were able to get me a drill that works today. You're very welcome. I hope that next time that you have a need for something like this, that you'll think of us. There you go, sir. Okay, great. Thank you. You're very welcome. So the guy comes here for it because he's drill. He can't find a drill that works properly. If you work in DIY stores, I'm sure that happens all the time. But in reality, what that customer would have looked like was this. Right, my family live in North Wales and I'm in Liverpool with not a penny to my name, right? I can't do it. You've inconvenienced me, right? You've left my bags there, all right? Nobody told me that I couldn't leave. Whatever it is that I've left in my bag is my business, all right? It's my personal belongings and you've got them and I want them back right now. I'm not having it. I'm not being stranded at Liverpool Airport. I'm known, all right? That woman obviously had her baggage lost and stolen and couldn't find it. That is reality. That is how it should be. That is what a real customer would actually sound like. So I thought what I would do is I would tell you Just Kane's perfect tips for good customer service. Now, one of the big things, the, the big key to customer service, and it is the major key, it unlocks everything to do with customer service. And I think it's so important that why this is not the first thing that you are trained is beyond me. The most important thing about customer service is rapport. What do, what do I mean by that? Well, rapport is being on that customer's level. So. Being on the customer's level and, you know, making that customer feel like they are actually talking to a friend. You are on their side. And you can do this in two ways. You show empathy and you apologise. Two key things. So a customer will come to you and they will be ranting and raving. And you show empathy and say, oh, I'm... That must be difficult. I'm re I, I, I understand that it must be really difficult for you. And I'm so sorry you're feeling that way. And I'm so sorry you feel that way. Instantly, the customer's thinking, okay, I'm going to get somewhere here. Now, customer service gurus will tell you, like in that first video, will tell you to repeat the problem back to them. Yeah. Right in certain points, but doing it like that, that would just piss a, that would just piss a customer off. It would me, because I would be stood there feeling like, okay, does he think I'm fucking stupid? Does he think I'm stupid? I don't, I know what the problem is. You don't need to keep going. A better thing to do is to abbreviate the problem. Like in that first video, I'd go, okay, so you've bought so you've bought a drill, it didn't work, you took it home, it didn't work, so we replaced it and that one didn't work. Am I about right with that? Is that what the issue is here? Yes? Okay, let me see what I can do to help. Done. Then you give your solution. That solution, by the way, would never actually So if you're a customer and that's what you're expecting, don't, because that's not going to happen, ever. That video, that first customer service video, is so unrealistic, it's in the realms of comedy. Because I've worked in shops, I've worked in call centres, I've worked face-to-face, -to -face, door to door you name it, in customer service world, I've done it. And I can tell you 100% that scenario never happens, ever. And the responses that that person gave never happens, ever. If you're going to put a training video out, at least make it realistic. I also came, during my time as customer service, I was once played 
this video which talks about um, rapport. Oh, just a minute, it's really slow today. Why would we ever tell our customers? Oh, I know that you know, you're investing your time and money with us, but we invest in really inferior business products. So just hold on a sec, okay? Why would we do that? Instead, look for opportunities to establish the PEC, the personal emotional connection with customers by when those opportunities arise, such as when our computers jam or when the systems are slow, that's the opportunity to say something such as, so tell me, open-ended question. What brings you in here today? Or, so all this information is coming up, tell me, how did your grandson enjoy those shoes that you bought last week? If you can look for opportunities, which are all over the place, to establish more of a PEC, a personal emotional connection with our customers, we will be nurturing our relationships by establishing that PEC rather than sabotaging it by establishing the fact that we don't invest in tools to serve them. And tip number three, remember that you will hear in organizations that do not invest in training or customer service. People say things such as, not a problem or no problem. Now we've covered these in past lessons, but remember if this is your first time with us or if you haven't already implemented those, these three things could transform your customer service rating overnight. I mean, instead of saying to somebody, not a problem, which is number one, crass. I mean, it's just unrefined. But in addition to that, it's telling somebody in a very subtle way, yeah, that's kind of a problem what you're doing, or you're being problematic, or you are bothering me, but it's my job. Okay, that guy's pompous. He's writing what he's saying to build rapport to make the customer feel like you're on their side. But using languages like, I understand, is actually going to annoy the customer even more. And you shouldn't say. You can use the word understand, but you need to change its context entirely. You actually need to reverse that and say, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I, I, I can completely understand how that would affect you. You know, that would work. Or, OK, I can see why that's annoying. Yeah, I can see why that's annoying. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I get it. I'm with you. That is a key word. I'm with you. It sounds a bit slang, and as that bloke said, it sounds a bit crass, but 90% of your customers are going to be real people that speak in real words, and they don't use posh words like he was using. They don't. And when they're talking to a customer service agent, they don't want to sound, they don't want to feel like they're talking to the queen. They want to feel like they're talking to a human being. So yes, if the language is crass, but it works, use it. And he's also writing what he says by never using a negative word. Never use the negative. So all, so what I mean is, is you use the nice sandwich say something good, confirm the negative, say something good. Use that technique, such as, well, I'm really pleased you use our company, and I'm really sorry that that item isn't working for you, but I can, but let me see what I can do to fix, let me see what I can do to help you today. Instantly, the customer knows one, you appreciate their business. Two, you understand the problem. And three, you're going to try and help them. Key things. Another important aspect of customer service is that dreadful hold. They say, I'm going to just put you on to hold. They put you on to hold. Ten minutes later, you're still waiting, thinking, like, are they, you know, are they coming back? Have they gone off and had a cup of tea? How long does it take to walk across an office? How much longer am I going to wait? Do they know I've got things to do? I mean, I've got to sort the children's bedroom out later. I've got to do that before they get home from school because I can't do it in on any other day. You could, but you don't want to. In your mind, the longer you're on hold, the angrier you're going to get. 
The perfect way to handle that situation, because you know you've got to put that customer on hold, for the, for the agent is to go, now I'm just going to put you on to hold for two to three minutes. Um, I will be coming back to you. Um, are you okay with that? So then once you said, I'm, are you okay with that? The customer knows you're going to have to put them on hold anyway, but they've got to agree to it. So they're going to agree. They can't get angry with you. They can't really get angry with you. But here's the important thing. If three minutes have passed and you still haven't got your answer, you need to go back to the customer and go, hi, thank you very much for holding. Really important, if you put a customer on hold, thank them for holding. It's not hard. It's really important. Thank you for holding. I really haven't got an answer for you yet. I'm going to have to put you back on hold for another two to three minutes. But I did just want to come back to let you know that I hadn't forgotten about you, OK? Back on hold, go get your answer, come back, give the solution. Everything's done. It never works out that way because the customer is always going to try and negotiate. Always. If that's the answer you've got, you need to stick to your guns and again, use use the nice sandwich. OK, well, like, excuse me, mine's gone blank now. So, but use that nice sandwich again, that you nice sandwich technique. OK, well, I really appreciate you holding and giving me the opportunity to go and get a solution for you. I understand that you would rather this happened. I don't know if I can do that. I'll have to go back to my manager and ask. And I do really appreciate you. I would really appreciate it if you held for another two to three minutes. Would that be okay with you? There we are. Your nice sandwich again. You've thanked the customer for holding. You've acknowledged that they want to negotiate the problem. And two, you've thanked them again because you're going to need to put them on to hold. The customer at this point feels totally appreciated. You're doing everything you can to get the answer you need. At that point, the customer is going to be a lot more receptive. They may not like the problem, the, the solution that you've given, but they're more weird, but they will be more willing to accept it. Because they do not want to go back onto hold. Now, I want to play you this call. Hello, are you the manager? Uh, well, yeah, the general manager. Okay, fine. Okay, the case here is that we have a registration form, and it said, said that we, we, we basically are committed for one month only, and, the, and this registration form, it says nothing about email, or oh, you, you will notify us by email that we have to call in to cancel. And also, we did not receive the email, okay? So we basically have this registration form that said that we are registered for one month. And that now you charge us three months through our credit card. And then what do you think? Do you think this is reasonable? And do you, are you looking at the registration yes, form? Yes, I have this registration form right here, and I will keep it in case I need to settle this case legally. Yeah. In the registration form, it says step one, choose a monthly subscription. It says one month. Or no, it doesn't say one month. Hours. It says monthly. No, 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 no. You want it me says to choose a subscription length form? is how often we renew the account. Like if you choose one month, Every month we renew. If it's no, no, three no, months, no. every three months we renew. You know what? Let me t let me read from this one. It says step two. No, no what step about step one? You didn't read step one. What step? Okay, step one. Two, Start three, with three, step three. one. Choose a monthly subscription. Yeah. It's monthly subscription. It's not. It's not only one month. It's monthly, which means you go month to month. You're not the first user. See, this is the problem. We have over 800 users that came before you, and everybody understands the same thing. No, 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 no. Don't try to put me that... Well, I'm going to tell way. you, I'm not going to argue with you. We're going to give you one month refund, and that's it. If you have a problem, you can take us to court. Okay, fine. All right. I Bye -bye. will talk with... Okay, fine. Bye. No problem. That 
that call was really shocking. To me, that was absolutely shocking. And to say that came from a general manager was, in my opinion, horrendous. And I hope he got sacked for that because that was a real call. First of all, he his tone was very like, oh, I can't be bothered to talk to you. you know, yeah, I'm the general manager, yeah. Yeah, I'm the general manager, yeah. Fat customers already hackles off. This guy's not going to help. Not going to help. Then the guy is frustrated because he's been charged for three months and he thought he was only going to get charged for one. What did that general manager do? He made the customer feel stupid. Stupid. You don't do that. You cannot do that. What he should have done was gone and go, hi, I'm the general, hi, my name's Kane, I'm the general manager, I hear you have a problem, how can I help? Make it nice and light and airy. The guy would have explained the problem again and go, oh, I can see the confusion there. Yes, I completely understand how you would have thought reading that, that you were only going to get charged for, for one month. Um, but, it, but it is worded it. However, we do try and word that in a way that does try and make you understand that it is a monthly subscription, which means it will renew at the end of every month. I'm really sorry about the confusion. What I'll do is I'll feed that back to our team and see if we can get the uh, form updated to be a little bit more clearer for future reference so nobody else has to go through what you're going through now. What I've done there is I've explained to him that it is a monthly subscription. I understand his concern. And I'm going to do something to fix that problem so it doesn't happen to any other person. My next thing I would do is I would go, now, I'm really sorry, but I can't um, refund all three months. But what I can do is refund a month for you. Is that OK for you? Is that OK? At this point, the customer's going to try and negotiate. They all do. At this point, I would go, OK, let me just put you on hold for two to three minutes while I go and speak to our finance department and see if I can arrange that for you. You put the customer on hold, two to three minutes pass. You come back to the customer and you say, thank you ever so much for holding there. Really appreciate that. Um, I understand that this is a difficult situation for you, um, but unfortunately, I can. Um, we can only offer that one month. Um, we can only offer that one month. But what I am going to do is I'm going to leave it active for an extra month free of charge for you. So you get to use the product free of charge for a month. Would that be OK for you, sir? Or, sir, I said sir, but you would then, uh, so you would then insert his name. At this point, he may try and negotiate again. And this is where you've got to be firm. You would be firm like, I'm really sorry. I do understand how annoyed you are. You know, and at this point, you would use the I understand that you're annoyed because it's appropriate to do so. I, you know... Or in fact, you say, oh, I appreciate that you're angry and I, I, I completely get that you've misread the you, you've misread the registration form. Totally. I totally understand that you've misread it. You know, I am happy to refund that one month and leave the site open for an extra month for your usage free of charge. At this point, the customer may get angry with you again because he hasn't got what he wanted. Allow the customer this because... A lot of anger is merely frustration, you know. At that point, take charge. Let him run his steam out. At that point, you can say to the customer, OK, so I've refunded that one month for you straight away. You should see that, ba th that money back in your bank account within and give the time and give a time frame. OK, 
if you are still unhappy with what I've done and want to escalate this further, what you can do is make a formal complaint. You can make a formal complaint to our customer relations department. Would you like me to give you their contact details? But at no point during that conversation do you talk over the customer. At no point do you make that customer feel stupid and it is their fault. That's wrong. You should never do that. Because remember, that customer has paid your wages. That customer is the bread and butter of the company. Without those customers, you wouldn't have a job. So you need to respect your customer. Jasper, I am filming something and you're jumping up and down on the table and it's wobbling the camera. Honestly, this lockdown has been horrendous. That cat is so naughty. And I'm gonna play another example here. At Luton Airport, the early afternoon flight to Nice has just boarded. A couple who missed it have turned to Jane for help. What are you guys for? Oh, but we've been stuck at the parking all this time. In about eight minutes. This cannot get but you no, on it. Got it really doesn't it make any it. difference. As I say, you're not listening to me. I've already tried I know, I know. to get somebody else on the flight five minutes but before why? you. Why? Why? What's why the problem? Not? Because the captain won't change his whole load sheet and he won't delay his flight now. This big thing about checking in half an hour before the flight. No, that's when you have to be at the very latest. It tells you half an hour. Well, we could have been here the had they ran enough fish, more efficient service up there. You're supposed to make checking. it easy. It says easy, It Jane. is easy. If you get well, here on time before here. the checking closes... We, we can still get, get on the plane. On the only option I can offer is that we'll transfer you through children to the next one. But the next one makes us late to the other end. It causes all sorts of problems. The well, I mean, I, can't, I cannot physically get you on it. The plane is still sitting there. They're still taking I can't, people. I cannot get you I'm, on it. I'm sorry. You know... All I can do is transfer you onto the next one. Have you tried? You see, you haven't even tried. We tried for three other people five minutes before you got here. It's, it's completely full now. No, it's not completely full. It's, it's gone so with you, whoever you checked in on in. time and the doors are closed. We've only got four days. We've made, missed a whole day because of your inconsideration. It's not my inconsideration. You arrived too late. It's nothing to do with my inconsideration. But I haven't been in the to towards you at all. I cannot get you on that one. If you're here on time, sir, But we were here on time. Do you want to... What did that EasyJet agent do wrong? Shall I tell you? At the point where she said, we've had three customers come through that I haven't been able to get on the flight first, so I'm not going to call the pilot. Yes, you might have done that, but those customers haven't seen you do that, have they? Haven't seen you do it. So they don't know that you're doing it, that you've done that. So what is the harm in picking up the phone and calling the pilot? You know the answer's going to be no, but the customers can see that you've tried. At that point, if she had done that, those passengers would have been a lot more receptive to being booked onto another flight. By not appearing to try, you're making your job harder. So, those are Just Kane's tips on great customer service. Um, if you want me to do more of these, let me know in the comments because I'm happy to do that. Um, and, of course, do stay safe during this uh, difficult time that we're all in. I know we're all going stir crazy and I know it, your mind is being absolutely blown out of the water right now. I completely understand that, totally get that, but you really must stay focused during this time. You know, this isn't gonna last forever. We will come out of lockdown, life will go back to normal, you know, or the new normal that we've now got used to. You know, so my words to you is stay safe. Don't dream it, be it. Life is yours to make. I love you all. Bye for now.